Okay, I've let that dry, and now I'm going to add some slightly darker rocks over the top of this, and, uh, and that should hopefully bring it up just a bit more. So again, another layer. So let's go back. Let's not make life too complicated for ourselves. Let's uh, use the um, cobalt blue, a little bit of the sepia, and we've used some of the lemon yellow before. So let's add a bit of that into the mix and make kind of a dark, slightly mucky looking um, green. So what I want to do here is make this area, I think, become some kind of rock uh, outcrop into it's it's not only in the in the form of the beach, it also goes out perhaps into the water. So I'm just placing that into there. I'm not fiddling and fiddling. And maybe I'll just work my way down, leaving some gaps in this water. So I'm making other sort of shapes where you make a mark. You can see there's like a big seed mark now, really. I might print those in. And I'm going to make this sort of peter out into the water. Again, I'm thinking straight. Just make life easy for yourself and go straight. This will just look like the water's lapping kind of around. This stuff is a little bit weak there in colour, so I'm just going to add in a little bit more dark into that kind of tiny wet and wet into those shapes. And I might also just let that peter in as if we've got some smaller stones into this area here where it touches the edge of my sand. Now do you see how when I've added this, the background uh, castle, the background beach, it falls away a little bit, as does the dunes, the sky, which seems such a big deal, it starts to sort of um, drop back. Let's also now, let's let's go a little bit more heavy. And I'm decisive. I'm going to add a couple of big rocks, a little bit more colourful here. Again, sitting on top of the last layer, and let these sit on top. Often a good idea, if you know, to make a shape, and then I just perhaps, you know, the same idea, it's a bit like sort of bar thing, make it flat bottoms, it's easier, and then just little bits outside it. That helps. You think how to create it, but it also makes it less like you've just stuck it on like some kind of transfer. Now, what I need to do next to some of this is actually lift the paint off a little bit. Um, so what I need to do now is I need to let that dry so that then I can lift it off without damaging what I've just painted. Let it dry, let it settle. And what you want is every time you want these edges to register. You want that layer to register. So, I'll let that dry. Okay, I've let that dry. Now, one of the things that uh, you can do with watercolour is lift it off. Now, you might not be able to get back to white, uh, but you might be able to get back to a lighter version or some slightly stained version of the paper. So. You may paint something with the thought that a, that a little bit later in the process you might just lift elements off. I find that using a flat nylon brush or a flat hog hair brush, but particularly a flat nylon brush with a chisel edge is, is very useful for doing this. So what I'm going to do, again using the kitchen roll, is I'm just going to wet the brush with clear water. I want to just want to highlight little bits of the top of this rock. So what I'm going to do is, a, this is wet and I'm just going to rub a specific shape out. Rub that off a little bit, then I'm just going to blot it out. So I just think it would be better with a little bit of light on top of my rock there. Just, it allows me to kind of make some shapes and re-carve really into what I've done. So instead of always thinking about adding dark, I'm adding dark, I might just lift bits out. And in here I might think, right, well I just lift out the odd light element in these rocks which adds a little bit of light. It makes the picture less somber. And you can also in some way carve into the picture. So let's imagine that we have an area of the beach here which is more wet. So what I think, oh well the light might hit that 
So I'll just imagine that that comes in, and then just using the kitchen roll, I've just pulled that a bit out. And you see how suddenly we've lifted up the light in here. Let's just do that there a little bit. Just think that if the light was against my dark rocks, there, so I don't rub like crazy, just a little bit of light abrasion. A bit of lifting. Now I've got that light coming out. And I just feel again over here, we could maybe with just the odd hint, just the odd touch, tops of the dunes perhaps. But this along here, maybe the odd light where the light is just catching, it's coming through the clouds, touching areas of the beach. The other thing is you might want to add a figure. Um, and a lot of the time if you're painting over, it's sometimes difficult to make that figure register. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a, a little figure shape. Oh, I'm going to take the, the flat side of this brush and I'm just going to fidget that backwards and forwards. And then I'm going to lift that out. Now again, what you need to do here is stop and let it dry a bit before you start to paint on top because otherwise it just goes... Um, soft and fudgy around the edges. You want that to have dried solid before you paint on top of it. So what I'm imagining there is the person is wearing say a white shirt or whatever. Their trousers, uh, you could paint that darker. So let's, again, rather than you know worrying about new colors, let's just take those two again. But maybe we'll make it a bit more blue. It'll probably attract attention for being a more, more, bit more blue. Probably look like a pair of jeans. So all I'm doing is imagining that I'm painting like kind of a block here for their bum. So I'm painting their bum. Making out a little bit more blue actually. Gone darker than I thought. And then I'm going to pull that out. So I'm doing that one leg and I'm pulling that down quite a reasonable distance. Don't give them short legs. If you give them short legs don't look that elegant. And if you can make one slightly long, longer than the other, it makes them look like this taking a step forward. And then I'm going to make this more kind of brown, wash the brush through a little bit. Go to a tiny touch of brown. And don't put a big head on, put a tiny hint of a head on. Now, if you want to make this sand look a little bit more wet, one of the tricks you can do is you take the height of this figure and you return it down here. So that the height of their trousers, now you notice I haven't stuck their shoes on by the way, or boots or feet. If you do, a lot of the time what you end up with is Frankenstein's boots. They look absolutely huge and maybe an arm at first, don't bother with. Just have them as a block and legs and the tiny head. That's probably the easiest way to start. We can talk about more sophisticated figures in a, at another video. So now I'm just taking that and I'm slightly wobbling it as if it's sort of in wet sand, same height as the legs, and then maybe wobbling it for where the bum was when we were painting it above. And then the bit that goes below, well that's light. So the little bit below, what I might do is just pull that bit out, just a hint that that's light below. And now I have sort of their figure on the beach. And I think that's probably enough. I could maybe add a little bit of dark into the water. In fact, no, I'm going to. I think what it needs is just a little bit of balance because the, the, the sea further away is just a little bit darker. So we're going to go back into there. So maybe just a little bit of tuning into this far side, just a little bit of painting so that that far distant bit of sea is a little bit darker. Tiny little lines, being a little bit more careful. And I think that just maybe evens it out. Now, there was what, five, six layers in that? I didn't do it in one great rush. I did the wet and wet, I did my washes, I've added little layers of wet on dry. So the wet and wet is only part of this process, only kind of the beginning and probably the most exciting bit. The rest is kind of calculating, layering, adding one over another. And, and that's probably the key bit in watercolour painting as you move on. It's the kind of the planning, thinking things through and being able to see what you can do and, and, and holding your patience. Be patient, let it dry, and then add the next layer. So I hope that's been helpful and I hope that kind of sets you on your way with uh, painting with watercolour. Uh, what I'll be doing is I'll be looking at some uh, products in uh, other videos uh, and showing you elements of how to mix colour and the like. Uh, but going forward, I'm going to do a load of series about 
uh, different things specifically. So I'll do a series on seascape painting and uh, on color and on trees, uh, figures, and, and there'll be a specific series that you can uh, look at on my website. I hope you've enjoyed this and I'll no doubt see you soon.